I rest, wrestle just a bit with this topic. The Lord has sent a word and, uh, you know, sometimes when you get a word you wonder how it will be taken. But I come to realize that that is not my concern. My job is to bring the word that the Lord has given me to give you. And what the Lord has uh, told me to tell you, he said, and this is a topic, ready or not, the Lord is coming. Ready or not, the Lord is coming. We are coming in that time, ladies and gentlemen. We are in that season where the Lord will soon open the door. We are living in a time where we cannot look back anymore. We have to look forward. We have to press forward and keep our eyes up because our redemption draws nigh. So whether you are ready or not, the Lord is coming. The rapture of the bride of Christ is upon us and so this i believe is a very serious word today a very serious message from the lord and a very serious warning to let you know that yes the lord is coming in the book of luke chapter 17 verses 32 to 36 it makes a very powerful statement here. And it is not a question. It is a statement of fact. Three words. It says, remember Lot's wife. Again, it did not ask you to, do you remember Lot's wife? Because there's a difference no, in, that sta in, 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 in this uh, statement. As opposed it to be a question. It is a, a, like a command. You tell it, listen, remember that wife. What happened to her? Now, if we know the story, of course, that Lot, he settled down in the city of Sodom. He, his wife, and his family. And the, the sin of that city came up to the throne room of God, and God decided he had to destroy the city but the lord decided he would grant lot and his family a safe passage out before he destroyed the city you would imagine that lot was a very wealthy man he was very wealthy and so his wife enjoyed the pleasures of wealthiness they had all that they needed. They enjoyed everything that they had. They were no lack, I believe, in that house. And so she held on quite tightly. Quite tightly to what they had. To what they were enjoying. But the command came to leave. Because the Lord was about to do something. The command came. And everyone decided, yes, they will do it. But deep down inside her heart, she had some stuff holding on to. She was holding on to those things that she so enjoyed. And so although she decided, of course, she wanted to, she decided to go with her husband. Physically she went, but her heart stayed back. The Bible tells us where your heart is. There your treasure is. And so her heart stayed back with her treasure. All the physical treasures of the world. But what happened? As they left, because she left her heart back there, she just couldn't keep her head straight. 
She just couldn't move forward like she was supposed to. The Lord gave a command to walk and not to look back. Because destruction was coming on the town. But you see something when you hold on to certain stuff in your heart. It controls your physical being. It controls your mind. It controls your eyes away. You see what you look. And so we have to be so careful and where we store up our treasures. The Bible tells us to store it up in heaven. Because in heaven, those what we, tre what we, what we store up will last forever. They will never erode. Nobody can steal them. But all the gold here, all the money, the house, the land, and everything else, it will soon fade away. Quickly run away. I was just telling, I think it was Tajid the other day, that if you had, were lucky to get a million pounds and you decided to go and buy a million pound house with that money tomorrow, that very same day, that house can catch a fire and burn right down to the ground. The money gone, just like that. And this is what we are holding on to sometimes. Things that don't last, will not last forever. Things that will just fade away at any given moment, at any given time, because... The Bible tells us they are only temporal. Everything here is temporary. Remember Lot's wife? She held on to her temporary stuff. And as she walked, her heart told her, or her eyes told her, listen, look back to your heart. She looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. And she was doomed for all eternity. This is why the word is coming to you today to tell you, remember that. Don't, st uh, uh, don't treasure things that are here in this world. Because it will be a hindrance. It will be a hindrance to your walk with God. It will be a hindrance to your relationship with God. I'm not saying that these things, we don't need them. Yes, we need them. We need money to live, to eat. We need food and all that. We need a house to, to stay in out of the cold. And we need these things. But the Lord, he knows that we need. And he made provision. Because he says in the book of Matthew 6.33 that if you would just seek me, seek me first and the kingdom of all and all my righteousness, then those things that you need, that your body need, that whatever you need in this life to fulfill your call, you will have it. In the book of Job, somewhere in Job, I can't tell you the exact verse, but it tells you that these things will chase you. In other words, you don't have to go looking for them. You don't have to put out yourself to go and find them. These things, the money, the car, the house, they will find you if you need them if you need them to fulfill the call that you have in this world you don't have to worry about those things remember lot's wife in verse 33 it says whosoever seeks to save his life will lose it and whoever loses his life will preserve it and i'm reading from the new king james version he goes on to say i tell you in that night, there will be two men in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together. The one will be taken and the other left. Two men will be in the field. The one will be taken and the other left. What is that talking about? The rapture of the bride of Christ. Ready or not, the Lord is coming. And is coming very, very soon. A day will come upon you in this generation. Could be any time from now where you're standing in the field with somebody else. Your friend, your best friend, your family member. And you will be taken or that friend will be taken. And you will be left behind. You will be in bed sleeping. 
one will be taken and one will be left we don't want that to be you that is why the lord is sending this very strong warning today to warn you be ready be ready because that time is very very close we hear it all the time we've been hearing it hearing it over and over and over and over but somehow this word today means a bit more or it is saying a bit more the warning is a bit more stronger why because we are closer than before and each and every day that passes brings us even closer and so although this message this word it excites me but on the other hand it, it saddens me because of the fact that you will see others that are around you that are not ready others around you that will not make it should the rapture happen they will be left behind to face the wrath of God that it will be coming on this world in my ministry in the path of my ministry I come across a lot of people people that have been gifted in very many ways and very special ways there are those who would have dreams, who will have visions. There are those who would hear the audible voice of God. There's one particular lady by the name of Susan Davis that I was led to do some work with. She brings out letters every so now and again. These letters are not normal letters. They are letters from the Lord and she has been gifted in this end time with a special gift where she actually hears the audible voice of God now how do I know this is true because I have experienced it myself you know the Lord has given me snippets of experiences because he knew I he would bring these people across my path and so I would not doubt them when I hear them and I have been bringing these letters on the radio program every time they they come out and I want to share the very last one that she received the very last letter she received she received it last month on the 11th of December where the Lord spoke to her and gave her a message for us for the world for those that will hear it was received on december 11th 2015 and i'm going to read this letter because i think it's very powerful you need to hear what the lord is saying in these end times and it says children it is i your lord i come to you with a heavy heart i am saddened the time is drawing nearer for the removal of my bride and at that point, many will be caught in sudden destruction who will not escape just as it is written in my book so many years before. All is coming to pass as I have outlined in my book. This generation has become filthy in my eyes. I cannot look upon the gross sinfulness of these evil children I created with my own hands and by my own breath, the breath of God. O lost world, turn back to your God. Seek me while I can still be found. Those who turn against me will be sorrowful for all eternity. Regretful, tormented, and forever in darkness apart from their great God of love and everlasting peace. What an hour of darkness that faces the earth and all those inhabitants of the earth those left behind to face my wrath poured out and the punishment of my enemy it will be a time like no other complete darkness will settle over the earth 
and it will seem like time is standing still because the anguish of great evil will paralyze those caught in it. It will seem to never end and many will cry out for the rocks to fall on them or to die to be relieved of the horror of the hour they live in. This is what is coming for my rebellious children. Those who will not submit to me now, those who choose not to allow me to enter into their heart, the love of the world is too great for them now. And so they will be punished for their rejection of God if they do not soon seek me for their deliverance. I am coming for a ready church. A church looking, waiting, and anticipating my arrival. This is my watchful church. Those who take my word and line it up to the times and see that my coming is nigh. They see the urgency of filling their oil lamps and they will be ready and waiting when I come. And their reward will be great. Look up, my children. Look up, your redemption draws nigh. I am coming to pull you free and carry you home with me to everlasting glory. Look up, O oh church. Love is coming. Hallelujah. A very strong word, a word that is full of hope for those of us who are watching, but a word of dismay for those who are not actually ready. Not because you come to church every Sunday means that you're ready. Not because you sing and praise means that you're ready. Not because you're on the worship team means that you're ready. To be ready means full submission to God. Doing the things that he wants you to do. Being in his will and not your own will. The word of God tells us in Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. It says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me. You who practice lawlessness, although King James Version you work iniquity, iniquity. Just like I just said, not everybody that professes to be a Christian is rapture ready. Because you are running around doing your own thing, pursuing your own goals, your own self want goals. Doing what you want to do. Rejecting the will of God because it doesn't look right or it doesn't seem right or it doesn't lead you to what you want. You will not lead you to what you want to achieve in life. You have your own personal goals. You're laying up your treasures here on something, on some institution somewhere. Real, not realizing that is not the will of God for you. We don't seek the will of God for us. We won't find it. The Bible tells us seek and we will find the knock and it will be open unto us. But instead of doing our own thing because sometimes the will or most times let me put it that way the will of God is not an easy road to walk. Full of bumps Full of roadblocks, full of mountains, rivers to cross, deep seas to sail across. But it is a necessary path that we must travel if we want to 
find the perfect will of God. You see, the thing with God, he does not just throw everything on, your, on, on you. He, he doesn't reveal every single thing all at once because we cannot handle it. So he gives you step by step, piece by piece. And that is why he requires faith from us. Because without faith, we are not going to take that next step because we cannot see where it leads. We think, oh, if we take that next step, we will fall into a ditch or we will step over the cliff. Even though you hear God is telling you to make that step. Our senses, our natural senses, our flesh will tell us, be careful. It could be dangerous. And so, some of us as Christians, we spend our entire Christian life asking that question or making that statement. I want to know what the will of God for my life is when the Lord is trying to show you but you're afraid to step out. You're thinking that you won't want to be embarrassed. You don't want to be shamed. You don't want to step out into the uncertain because you have studied, you have certain uh, intellect, you have certain knowledge, and you want to make sure that you can use it. But it doesn't work that way. I'm afraid when the Lord gives you an instruction, it is normally not something you can do within your own power, within your own strength, within your own ability, because you would not need the Holy Spirit if you did. So by His Spirit, we have to learn to walk. By His Spirit, we have to learn to move. We have to learn to be obedient. To listen and to follow what you hear, what instruction you may have. Because you, on that day, you don't want to be surprised. We could be a Sunday like this one where we're standing here. And all of a sudden, you don't see people start disappearing around you. And you are not moving an inch off the ground. What a day that will be. And that day is coming very, very soon. Hence the word today. Ready or not, the Lord is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you truly ready? Or will you be the ones who will say, Lord, Lord, remember I come to church every Sunday. Remember, I was here praying. I even prayed tongues. Lord, I was bawling. I was crying out for you. I even witnessed to one or two people out there. But having done all that to hear, I never knew you. Do you have a personal relationship with the Lord? Do you have, do you know him for who he is? Have you spent time with him lately? Have you been with him? Do you really know him the way that he wants you to know him? Or have you chosen how much you want to know him? Or how much you want to let him in? Have you made a choice for yourself? These are questions. Very serious questions that we need to ask ourselves. Because if we are traveling on that path, on that road, we are not going to make it. We are going to be left behind. In the book of Revelation 21.8, he says, But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the un, 
the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Picture this in your mind, a lake of fire and brimstone, liquid fire. Fire that is hotter than fire that we know. Fire that will not burn you and kill you. You will feel the pain, yet you will never get out of it. How long? For all eternity. To be cast into the lake of fire, which burns with fire and brimstone. That's why the Bible calls it the second death. Although you will not literally die, but it is like death, death because you will be separated forever from life, which is God. Tormented! In pain. They will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is what the Bible tells us. On that day, the book of Revelation 22, 11 to 12, it says, who, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. But he who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. It says, and behold, I come quickly, I am coming quickly. And my reward is with me to give everyone according to his work. Some of us, we think we can delay the coming of the Lord. We think the Lord will wait because... You are not ready. You think the Lord will delay because there's some people you think that you want to see get saved. And they are not saved at yes, so you think the Lord will not come until that happens. But sad to say that not everybody will be saved. Not every family member will be saved. That's why the Bible tells us, as our dear sister was saying today, that we have to work out our own salvation. Make sure that we are right. Make sure that you are ready. We will pray for them. We will pray earnestly and fervently for them. But make sure that you are ready. You don't want to be preaching somebody else into the kingdom and then you, yourself, don't make it at the end of the day. Make sure that you are right. We will worry about our, 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 our families, our sisters, our brothers, our parents, our cousins. We worry about them because we want them to be saved. We want, them to, we want to see them in heaven. Everybody. But not all will make it. But in the meantime, we have to heed the warning of the Lord. He is saying, ready or not, I am coming. And so as we heard the Lord elaborate on what the horrors that you will, you will experience, should you be left behind in this very letter here that he wrote? 1 John 2, 15 tells us, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Simply put, everything that is in the world, if there's anything at all that you decide, oh, I love this so much, I don't want to let it go. 
I can't just leave it like that. If you love money, if you love the things, the material things in the world, the word of God is saying that you don't love God. Children, if you love your video games so much that you can't spend time with God, the word of God is saying you don't love God. If you love your job more than you love spending time with God, that you can't find time to spend with God, that you can't you know, you know, just make time for God, the word of God is saying you don't love God. Saying you love God doesn't mean you love God. You have to show him that you love him. By your actions, that is what will, t will determine what is truly down inside of our heart. There will be coming a time when all these things that you're killing yourself over now, they will seem like nothing. There will be nothing. There will be coming a time will, when you would be even to able, will not be able to use money. When the mark of the beast comes around, money will have nothing to do there. You can't use money by yourself without that mark. There's so many things that the Lord has shown me in dreams with regard to what will happen in the tribulation period. It's not going to be nice. Even the Bible tells us it will be a time like never before. In other words, all the, the, the natural disasters, the worst of them that you have seen, that you have experienced. You will hear about some real difficulties and some bad things happening that has happened maybe way back in the past somewhere along the line. But what the Bible is saying, nothing that has ever happened in the history of this world will compare to what you will experience during the time of the tribulation period. We cannot even imagine what it's going to be like because we have never seen it. Mankind has never experienced the horrors, the difficulties that will be experienced. That's why people will want to die. But there will be time when you will want to die when you cannot die with death will be running away from you. You're going to try to kill yourself, but it will never work. You would tell somebody to kill you, it will never work. You would tell the rocks, the buildings, whatever, to fall down on you. Nothing will work. It will be so bad, but you will not escape. There will be no escape So this is something we have to take very seriously today. That if we are foolish enough to ignore the warnings that we are getting today, to ignore all the words and the messages that the Lord is sending through his servants, through his prophets, through his children, here, there, and everywhere, if we are ignoring them, thinking that the time is not yet and thinking it is too soon because there are certain things that has to happen. You are in for a big and very serious surprise because I can tell you, according to scripture, if you really know the scriptures, there is nothing that needs to happen now before the rapture. There are the prophecies, but those are relating to the second coming of the Lord, which is after the tribulation period when Christ come back with his, to start his millennium reign. So don't confuse certain things in terms of the rapture and the second coming. There are two different events. There are certain things that will happen before then 
but as to the rapture, as to the rapture, as to Christ coming to take his church out of the way of danger, there is nothing to happen. In other words, it can happen this very second. It can happen at any moment. So we are to be ready. The letter E here is telling us to look up because our redemption draws nigh. We have to keep our eyes fixed on Christ right now. We cannot afford to look back. We cannot afford to look to the left nor to the right. We have to look forward to Christ because at any time now, he can come and say, church, let's go. Who is ready? Who is packed? Let's go. At that time, if you don't have everything in your bags, you can't go. You hear the story of the five foolish virgins and the five wise where the five foolish did not top up the oil. They didn't have enough. Everybody fell asleep. When they least expected, the bridegroom came. Only the ones who were wise to keep enough oil to make sure that they're always topped up to make sure that their heads are looking up, to make sure that they do all the things that they should do. They're walking in the will of God. Only those Christians were taken. The other set of Christians, because they were all Christians, you know. The other set of Christians, they were left behind because they were simply not ready. They didn't have enough oil. We don't want to fall within that bracket today. We want to take this word very seriously. You know, the Lord gave me this topic a few days ago and nothing to go with it until yesterday. Ready or not, the Lord is coming. And he confirmed it with this letter that he has led me to read to, read to you. Telling you that his time is drawing near. And he is coming to remove his bride to safety. And as we go, evil is going to have free reign in this world. That is why it's going to be so bad. There will be nothing stopping evil. Right now the Holy Spirit is here restraining it. Although you hear about ISIS and all what they're doing, there is a restraint, a restraint in it right now. So they're not able to do what they really, really, really want to do. But when the Holy Spirit leaves with the church, woe, woe be unto the inhabitants of the earth that are left behind to face what is coming. And so I encourage you very strongly today very strongly don't allow the cares of this world because that is the main thing that is holding a lot of us back do not allow the cares of this life to hold you captive in any way let it go let it go you don't need them whatever you need you will have but let go of things that are holding you back from God. If there are things in your life that hinders you from coming to church, let it go. If there are things in your life that hinders you from spending time with God in his word, in prayer, let it go. If there are things in your life that you do that take so much of your energy that you cannot wake up to give God his time, let it go. And I say that without fear or favor because I'm telling it for your own good. Let it go. Let it go. It's not worth it. Eternity 
is upon you. Where will you spend it determines or you will determine where you will spend it. It is your decision. You're not being forced. It is your decision. It's all about having that faith in God and what he says. If he tells you, if he promises you in his word that you don't have to kill yourself over certain things, pursue certain things in a way that will hinder your walk with him, you just don't do it. Simple as that. Let it go. Because ready or not, the Lord is coming. Just want to encourage you again. If you're here today, if you're not saved, you are taking some serious chances. You're taking some serious chances with your life, with your eternal life. If you are not following God the way you should know, you're taking some very, very serious chances. Because time is not waiting on you. You've been getting the warnings. You've been getting the messages. The Lord is telling you to come now. I'm sure that the Lord is speaking to you personally, individually. To come. Surrender to him. Surrender to him before it's too late. For those of you who are saved. And you know you're not fully into it. Get into it now. Get into it. Lord, just jump in. Without looking back. Because the time is short. And the Lord, he is coming. Ready or not. Amen. Thank you for joining us and thank you for listening to this timely and powerful message. You have heard the word, and now we would like to extend this opportunity to you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you wish to do this, please just say this short prayer after me. The Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Please forgive me of all of my sins and cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Save me and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I thank you for answering my prayer and I thank you for saving me. Amen. And if you have said that prayer, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. If you would like to contact us or even visit us, the information that you need will be on your screen in a few seconds. Until next time, goodbye. God richly bless you.